I'm Baptiste Barbeau. I'm assistant professor of psychology at Pace University. Um, my main research interest focuses on creativity and identity development in adolescence. Um, I started to be interested in this research because I observed many children that I knew when I was younger um, who were very creative as children and their creativity didn't make it through after adolescence. And it was quite interesting to me why they kind of lost interest in um, their creative uh, outlets. Um, what was uh, very salient was that adolescence is a time of identity formation and I s hypothesized that both creativity and identity could develop in tandem. So uh, my research thus far that I've conducted with adolescents um, in the general population, but also in adolescents um, involved with the juvenile justice system, has shown that um, there are several ways creativity and identity development are related. There's actually three main reasons. Uh, one is the um, underlying thinking processes or cognitive processes that are involved in creativity are also involved in the formation of identity. I'm thinking in particular to divergent thinking, which is the ability to generate alternative solutions to a single problem or stimuli. Um, when you uh, develop your identity, you're also involved in this divergent process of um, figuring out what do you want to be and exploring different options um, in that respect. Uh, the second area of relationship between identity and creativity is how creative outlets are sometimes used as a way to express yourself, express sometimes some distress that can be resulting from the challenging process of identity formation. So having creative outlets can help the adolescent to channel this distress and express and learn more about themselves through them. The final um, area uh, or domain related to uh, this um, particular topic is having a creative outlet or creative activity in which you are committed um, provides you also elements to define yourself. So for example, if you're a um, very accomplished and committed musician, creative musician, um, and uh, we ask the adolescent, um, who are you? They will tend to answer, I'm a musician. So they have like some elements to define themselves. So again, I've been conducting several, re uh, several research uh, with adolescents, uh, longitudinal, longitudinal research. One of the um, uh, uh, main goal of this research is uh, using potentially creativity to support identity developments in adolescents that need some supports. Uh, to um, go through that developmental task. Um, so creativity could be used to stimulate the, their creative and, 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 and um, uh, exploratory processes or help them express themselves or help them find an outlet in which they are committed. Um, right now, uh, and since uh, the past few years, I've been focusing on more uh, some specific methodological challenges when we study the development of creativity, which is how can we measure creativity over time? Um, so if I give a, creative, uh, a creativity task today to an adolescent, I cannot ask him the same task six months later because he will, it's not going to be new any, anymore. So it's going to be difficult to administer exactly the same task. So we often rely on different types of tasks at different measurement occasions. And one of the big challenges is that typically these tasks are not that parallel in the sense that kids typically have a preference for one task over another and it's difficult to know whether the change that we observe over time is due to the developments or whether it's due to the change of task. So one of the big focus of my work these past few years is to measure more accurately creativity over time so that this line of research can really be expanded.